This is the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose, where I strategize with business owners on how to grow and scale their businesses to hit their income goals. This is episode 235 of the Influencer Entrepreneurs Podcast with Jenny Melrose. Today, I am speaking with Kate Hort Lisi, and we're going to be diving into why sales messaging is so important and leans to easier yeses. So not only is Kate sharing amazing information today, but she is doing it at 1 a.m. her time because she is in Australia. So she stayed up super late in order to do this so that she could make sure that she gave you guys such great, valuable information. I appreciate Kate for doing this. I know you guys are going to get so much value out of this. You're going to hear us talking about your sales messaging. I also want to make sure that I mentioned my Mastering Overwhelm blueprint that you can make sure that you grab. You can send me a DM on Instagram at Jenny underscore Melrose because you're going to hear us talking about kind of that, how you can get overwhelmed with all the different things that you have to get done. This blueprint will help you so that you can kind of have a path and not get stuck in that spiral of overwhelm and worry. All right, you guys, let's dive in to this episode. Hi, Kate. How are you? Hey, Jenny. Great to be here. Great to see you. I know our audience can't see, but I can see your lovely face. And it's uh, great to be here. It's 1 1 a.m. in the morning in Sydney. And what time is it over there? It is 11 a.m. Eastern. (laughs) 11 a.m. Nice. (laughs) So there's quite a time difference. And I am so grateful that you got kept yourself up super late in order to do this interview because we're going to be talking about something that is so important when it comes to their sales messaging. But before we jump into that, will you introduce yourself and your business to my audience? Absolutely. Hey, hey everyone. I'm Kate Hall Lacey. I am a sales and mindset coach from Sydney, Australia, but I am, I've got the honor of working with people all around the world, uh, everywhere from Germany uh, to America, to New Zealand, to my first client in the Middle East recently, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I work with um, entrepreneurs, business owners, consultants, uh, course creators, bloggers, influencers, people who have something really important to share, something really valuable, who are great at what they do, but they struggle with sales. And they oftentimes often say that they actually hate sales, but what they find is and what I always see is that it's that it's not that they hate sales it's just that they haven't really had any training as soon as they get training they're like boof this is actually kind of fun and everyone just switches over and look it is fun when more people are saying yes to you um, but the way I teach sales is it's def- it's definitely kind of a new wave of selling which is about really understanding the heads and hearts of your ideal clients and attracting them to you um getting them to know you like you trust you before they even get on the phone with you so by the time they do there's not that much selling required um but we're going to be talking today about uh messaging which is just such a fantastic very powerful um aspect of of sales uh, i was just saying to jenny before we we got started that it's incredibly important obviously for newer entrepreneurs and business owners to get it right but even for like i know someone with a million dollar business and she tweaked her messaging just a little bit and her sales have gone up by 10 percent. so that's an a hundred hundred thousand dollars per year she's making from a few small tweaks so it's something as business owners we have to be aware of we have to always keep on polishing it and perfecting it and if you haven't been that aware of sales messaging today uh, I really hope this is going to be valuable for you I know a lot of you are bloggers so you're going to be word people so you're going to be great at this so I'm looking forward to getting into it yes and I think it's going to be really important to those that are trying to 
really grow their service-based business as well as their products. I have quite a few um, audience members that have their own products or services. And then it comes to the sales side because they're so used to just kind of sharing things and creating content that this is going to be a huge, help, such a helper for them. So what exactly are we talking about when we talk about our sales messaging? What are we referring to? Sure. So it's, it can be everything from when people hit your LinkedIn profile and they read the first couple of things that they read about you. It can be on your website. It will be in your offers, like how you talk about that product or your, or that service that you're, uh, you're talking about. It also permeates through your content that you're creating, especially if you want to create more clickable, likable content that really resonates with your ideal client and not just entertains them, but makes them think, Hey, look, this person probably has something that I need and I want to take that next step with them. Even if it just means, um, watching another, the video, for instance, or it might be, I'm going to take the next step, which might be downloading a free offer. And then might be the next step coming to a masterclass or a webinar, and then finally buying from you. Uh, so your messaging really does permeate the whole of your business, including it actually informs your offers. Because when you get it really, really right, and you understand the heads and hearts of your ideal clients, you know what to put in your offers to make them convert and also to make them powerfully effective because once you really know what your ideal clients really want and the pain that they're in, you you bend over backwards to get them what they want and to get them out of that pain that they are in. So you're like, okay, how can I get this done? How can I make sure that they're going to get this in this product or service? And it makes you more agile, more creative and put together better quality offers. So it's really, yeah, as I said, permeates the whole of your business. Yes. And I think you said something that really resonated with me is that it gets them to understand that you understand their pain points, right? I think one of the best emails you can get from someone is when they, you send a sales email and instead of saying unsubscribe, they say, instead, I felt like you were in my head. It was like, you're a fly on the wall in my house. You were right there with me. How did you know that this was what I was thinking or what I was feeling? And I think that's what a lot of people miss because they think they have to be, you know, that flashy salesy kind of person. When in reality, it's just hitting on those pain points and showing them that you understand and that you're trying to get them the solution, not trying to make the sale, but trying to get them to that solution. So what is key to strong sales messaging? Sure. Um, so you're absolutely right. It's, it's like when people feel like you are in their heads, it just, it's so powerful. And it's important for everybody to know that, that sales really are made on the pain. You know, people really don't love to spend money. I mean, we love to spend money on beautiful things sometimes, but a lot of the time people would rather have their money in their pocket. So they need to be resonating with, you know, I'm kind of struggling with this. Can you help me solve this issue? Um, so so I guess um, what we could probably start with is what not to do and what I find a lot of my clients do, even the super smart ones who have been in business for some time, um, so I like to describe your messaging like the, as like the vehicle that you are asking your ideal clients to jump on board and come on a journey with you. And I, I kind of um, like to describe it like what you don't want to do is ask people to get on this black cab to nowhere with you. And um, CAB is an acronym for um, for what not to do. Now, the first letter C stands for CLEVER. So you can sometimes, I, I work with a lot of people who, as I said, are quite smart and sometimes they can get quite clever and quite philosophical and poetic with their messaging, which is great, but it's not effective because people need to be able to get it really quickly, especially if they don't know you. As much as I love poetry, words and philosophy, I won't spend a lot of time kind of reading through someone's profile forever. I need to be able to get it quickly. So you don't want to be too clever you, you need to make it readable like so like a 12 year old could, could understand it 
Uh, the A stands for all about me. So if you've got a LinkedIn profile, for instance, you don't want to have all of it like looking like a CV. Um, if you're creating a course, you might be really proud that you've done 10 hours of video. Uh, we've got a great backend system. And that, that's all about you and the things that make sense to you. You need to be thinking about it from their perspective. And honestly, they're probably not interested in those things. And the B stands for broad. This is a mistake that so many of us make. We're like, oh, I've got such a great product or service. You know, I can help everybody. I really can help everybody. And you possibly can. But today, you know, we've got such a global selling space. There are billions of people in the world. And when you try and speak to everyone, you speak to no one. So you don't want to ask people to get on this black hat to nowhere because they will simply jump off. Um, you want to basically say, so like it's like, you know, you want to get people to know that they are in this place that's a little bit windy, rainy, cold, and they want to go somewhere beautiful, wherever that is. It could be the snow, it could be under palm trees, and it's not just anywhere, it's this very specific place and you've got the map to this place. So what you want to do instead to answer your question, Jenny, is you want to call in the SAS. Um, so the and that's like you know the flying service to let them know that you are professional. You're going to get them there fast. So the first S stands for specific, and um, a great way to be super specific is to use their specific words as to when they are describing the pain that they're in and what they really want, that beautiful sunny place they want to go to. How do they describe that? So your client interviews are super important when you're uh, when you're when you're looking at doing this. You can also get some great messaging ideas from Amazon. From um, if you if your ideal clients read certain books, you can you can look at the reviews and see. Hey, um, you know people say, oh look, I was really struggling with this, and I love this because it really helped me sort out that, and I love this about it. All of that will really help your messaging. You can use some of those words. Um, the A stands for all about them. And so you want to think about really put on your ideal client's hat with everything you do and start asking yourself, would this resonate with my people? Is this important for them to know what is in it for them? And the final S stands for secrets. So the, probably the best way to get really great messaging is by doing client interviews. And what you're listening for is any kind of little secrets that might pop out. Like, for instance, if you are selling to, say, spiritual entrepreneurs and you're, and the, the woman says, um, you know, I shouldn't really say this, but um, what I really love is a shitload of money. Yeah, you know, and you're like, oh yeah, cool. So you want money for money? That's great. So what would you use the money for? And she's like, well, I'd buy my parents a home. I would swim around in organic food. I'd buy the most expensive, amazing supplements. I'd give to my favorite charities, and they get really pumped up about all this stuff they're going to do with this money. So instead of just saying broadly to these people, you know, you can make a load of money and it bounces off them because they're like that doesn't resonate with me you can say you know you can make a shitload of money so you can you know take care of the ones you love so you can support your charities that you love so you can buy the most amazing organic food and you know vote with your dollar and then that's when you get people um who say look you know she's not she she understands me she she gets me she's for me uh yeah so that's what you want to do and another great thing about messaging is you can also uh kind of talk about the people you don't necessarily want to work with you know so who do you love working with um you know do you work with go-getters action takers who do you love working with and then you know this is not for you might say people who are, you know, who always um, there's never the right time who put, you know, or you might love working with procrastinators, people who are self-sabotaging. You might say, if you are someone who self-sabotages, who always has excuses, I'm your person. I Come work with me. I can help you get over that if that's what you do. But if you get really clear about who you work with, who you don't work with, that's really going to help. There is so many not only do I love the fact that you have those um, examples, but just, it was perfect. 
I, I, there's no other way <laughs> going back and forth. I'm like, there were so many things that when you said the mistakes and then said the things moving forward, I'm thinking of all these different clients that I've talked to recently. And I'm like, yep, they did that. Yep. They did that. Yep. They did that. Cause it is that's exactly what you're li listening for. And for those that are listening that are thinking, well, I don't have a product. I don't have a service. When you pitch brands, it's the same thing as what we're talking about. You have to know their language. I always talk about the fact, go to their website, see what they're, um, what they're talking about on the website. As far as the information, they're the products, what kind of language do they use? Make sure you use it back to them. And I, biggest thing, it's not about you. It's about them and the audience that they're trying to reach. And you know that. So this is just, I know a lot of times people will come into episodes and they're thinking, well, I don't know if this is going to pertain to me. There were so many nuggets that if someone walks away without feeling they got, they, they weren't listening. So you need to go back if that's the case. Yeah. Um, so good, Kate. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and that's what, you know, uh, that, you know, you're all about giving value and I hope someone, you know, people got value out of that. But you're right. Look, even if people aren't selling a product or service right now, honestly, sales is one of those key things that you, once you learn it, it, it will help you with your whole, with everything. And it's true if you are, whoever you are pitching, it is still a sale. Every time someone wants to take an action with you, make a phone, you know, have a phone call with you, um, just take that next little step. That is still a sale. And the best way for you to get sales is, as Jenny said, it is all about them. You know, just always if you can, you know, the, the longer I work with people, they seem to always just click in at a certain point, usually around the six-week mark, and they start thinking from that perspective. It's kind of a bit like looking at one of those old-school um, pictures, you know, when you look at it for like half an hour, it's just like a pattern, and then all of a sudden it, it changes and adjusts, and all of a sudden you see this 3D picture. That's a little bit like what it's like um, when you get into this mentality of, just really understanding that it's really not about you. It's it's really about them uh, and just seeing it from their perspective and you'll always do better at, and it helps you, you know, breed compassion and, uh, and also come up with better offers. Um, and it can also help you get over yourself when it comes to actually selling because instead of being stuck in the fear of like, um, if you do have to have a sales call about going, oh, no, I'm nervous about this. I wonder how it's going to go. Um, are they going to say yes? Uh, I don't really know what I'm doing. Oh, my God, I hope they don't feel like I'm salesy. So instead of that, you will hopefully start just putting all your attention on them and, and just get over yourself and go, okay, um, I know this is one of my ideal clients because I've attracted them. I know I can probably help them. I'm going to make sure of it in the call. If I can't, that's fine. But I'm going to do everything I can just to help them to say yes to themselves if this is right for them. And it's not about me and my own fears. I'm just going to um, work the process and give them and get them to a, just a clear yes or no. Uh, and it's absolutely fine either way. Um, I don't have to say yes to them. They don't have to say yes to me. But um, I'm not going to let my fears get in the way of something that could be really life-changing for this person, you know, buying your product or service. And to anyone who's listening out there, if you're thinking about starting a business or you've got a blog already or you're doing course creation, whatever it might be, I believe when we're called to these things, it's not an easy path. You know, being an entrepreneur, being a business owner is not easy. If people tell you it is, uh, well, you know, look, anything's possible and maybe certain people jump out and have fast success. But for the vast majority, it's challenging. But we can kind of relish that because um, it's those challenging things that help us to grow and become a bigger, better person. And you know, you'll have to do scary things. You'll have to do things where you don't know what you're doing. I mean, it's great to get help. It'll help you get further faster. Um, but but know that you've got something valuable to offer and you are worth it and you are worth getting over yourself to help people get that and get that thing that you're offering. Yes. You, when you were just talking now, you spoke about attracting that right audience, right? They were attracted to you in order to get onto the call. And that you said was one of the mistakes that people make is that that B was too broad. They're trying to attract everyone under the sun. So 
when it comes to attracting those right people, is there kind of a strategy or words that you use or how do you get really clear on making sure that you're attracting the right audience to get that easy yes for sale? Yeah, great question. Um, so it's really just, you've got to just make a choice on who is the, the person, like out of all the different demographics, if you're struggling to choose your ideal client, you just got to think about who do I love working with the most and who do I get the best results for? And then just simply choose that person. And then you really need to just really understand them by either doing those client interviews um, or doing your research. There's numbers of ways to research. Um, you know, in my program, uh, we, we put together 40 points that um, you can you will create your messaging around and your content around. So you've got kind of 40 points that you can basically get numerous amounts of content that you know is going to land with your ideal client. So it's fine if it doesn't land with everybody, but it's going to land with your ideal client because you start to get to know them. Now, this is an organic process and you'll be polishing it always. I, I, you know, working with someone definitely helps you get there a lot faster. Um, but, uh, but don't expect to have it down and just complete and then that is it forever. Because, and this is the thing too, as you grow and up-level your business, your messaging will grow and up-level and your clients will probably grow and up-level with you as well as they get more successful. Your messaging will change a bit and, um, you know, you'll be appealing to slightly different people. Um, but uh, basically, your, because your messaging really does permeate everything from your blogging to your videos, to your offers, to your um, website, to any speaking you do, whether it be webinar or podcasting, whatever it is, and it's right through everything you do, people will start to get a flavour of what you're about and if they like you or not, if they kind of resonate with how you deliver information. And it's a little bit like, you know, our husbands or wives or boyfriends, girlfriends, you know, whatever you've got, um, we may not be for absolutely everybody, and that is okay. But for the right people, we are really right for those people, and that's why there's enough room for all of us in this wide world of offers and entrepreneurships. In fact, we need a lot more entrepreneurs to come up with things from nothing because, my dears, that is what we do. You know, we will come up with a blog from nothing, you know, and put it out there, and it is there as this little creation that was never in the world before if you come up with a course it is bringing something to the world and the world needs more of all of that they need it needs more creativity more people putting on their thinking hats solving problems for people and helping them to get to that next step easier so with this messaging the more you can be your authentic self but get really clear about who you work with and how you really can help them, what they're really struggling with, and go in there to bat for them, making sure you're super clear all the way and pretty much creating everything for them. Like I, I don't kind of, I'm not one personally, and I know a lot of people are great at this and I wish I was better at it in a lot of ways, but I'm not someone I mean I love my dog and stuff like that but I don't put out a lot of dog pictures and you know just stuff about I don't know just here's what I ate for lunch and stuff and I know that really works for a lot of people um but for me and I guess this is um just a me thing but for me it's all about value they've got to get something that moves the needle forward for them if they invest a minute or two in watching one of my videos I want them to get a little aha, a little tip that's going to help them move forward. They invest in watching a masterclass with me. I want them to get information that they can use today. Uh, you know, one of the worst things is, you know, when um, you listen to something for an hour and, and they give you a tiny piece of information. That's not what I'm about. And I would encourage everybody to give, give, give and give away your best stuff. Don't be afraid of giving. There is always more for you to be had, you know, to be had. Creativity is endless. Uh, and, and even if you have repeated yourself numerous times, as you will do in your messaging, um, 
because it might be across platforms, it might be certainly across uh, different mediums in your business, you know, from your blogging to your videos to your offers, etc. Um, people need to hear things more than once for them to take action on it oftentimes and they need to hear it more than once for it to sink in. Uh, you know, you might say it a slightly different way on the fifth or sixth time and they go, oh, oh my God okay, I just got that. I'm going to do that. And then that's when you get people, you know, writing back and go, oh, my God, I just got a sale because of you. You know, um, I tried that thing and it was amazing and thank you. Um, but, you know, that might have been the third or fourth time they heard that exact same thing. It's it's possible. I mean, I try and come up with as much new stuff as possible. But um, we all have that fear of repeating ourselves. And what I'm trying to get better at myself, and I'm still not perfect, is... Um, really understanding that it does take some repetition and and people don't mind hearing things more than once. Uh, yeah. So does that answer your question? I know it's a fairly that, long no, it, it absolutely does. And I think to go along with that, when you're thinking about repeating that content, I think that's why we always say don't reinvent the wheel. Use content that you've already created and put it into a different medium. So if you've done a podcast, use it as a, as a blog post and then use that as content to possibly create an Instagram reel or an Instagram post so that they're seeing it in different ways because you have audience members that kind of are attracted to different ways of consuming content. And I think that that is so key. So it's okay, like you said, to repeat yourself, use a different medium to help you put it out there in a way in which they are looking for it. So that's, that's such a great point. point, Jenny, because you're right. And there are different learners as well. Like some people learn best from reading. You know, I love reading personally, even though I put out a ton of videos. Other people love videos. Um, you know, other people might want to come to a master class and learn more practical stuff. So you're right. You know, that that's such a great point, as well as being saving you time by being able to put it out across different platforms um i think you're going to resonate with with more people by giving them more options on how to actually consume the content yes yeah, a great point yeah that way we're not always because that's i think something we run into i hear from clients all the time they feel like all they're doing is creating new content and look at all the content they have and just repurposing it. I think it's just so important and an easy way to do it, to continue to attract those people in the different mediums, since there are so many platforms now where they feel like they're chasing their tail to try to get the content out. Just because, just for some of you that might feel a bit overwhelmed, um, and this is going to be a little tiny bit controversial potentially, but if you can be across all platforms, then great, go for it. If you are kind of starting out and you're, you're, there's only one of you, I would say just choose one or two, you know, really. For me personally, like I used to be on Facebook quite a lot, I feel like it's a bit tapped out. I personally am on LinkedIn uh, just constantly. That's all I'm focusing on, going deep. Um, I'm about to take on a team, so I'll probably start doing other things like um, probably a YouTube channel and stuff like that. Um, I think Clubhouse does sound really interesting. But um, but personally, for for last two years, I've just been going deep with LinkedIn and that has been so effective. Uh, oh, my gosh. I've be, been getting clients for, you know, absolutely, you know, nothing, filling out programs and stuff like that. It's not spending a dollar just from going deep with LinkedIn. And the interesting thing about LinkedIn too is um, 30 percent of people I just heard only are on LinkedIn. They're not actually on other platforms. So that can be a good one to look at. Um, but if you are across a ton of platforms and you're rocking it out, brilliant, go for it, go for it. If you're feeling a little overwhelmed, it's not a bad thing just to choose one or two and um, and just just give yourself a little bit of breathing space, a little bit of room and, uh, and, and know that that's enough. You know, always be pushing your edge, but you don't have to be everywhere. I mean, it's a great thing if you can be, and once you've got a massive team, sure. But when you're starting out, oh, my gosh, just, just getting good at one platform and finding your and attracting your ideal clients on that platform is enough. Yes. No, I agree entirely. And I'm sure audience is shaking their head saying, yep, she said, that, Jenny said that a lot of times before and I never listened to her. So now I'm going to listen to what Kate said. I'm sure that's what <laughs> Kate said. <laughs> um, Kate, you have um, an opt-in that you are offering up to my 
audience. It's called three easy closing questions that lead to a yes. Can you tell them a little bit about it, what they get out of taking advantage of it? And we're going to make sure to link to it in the show notes. Um, as well as everybody knows, you listeners can head over to Instagram and just DM me that you would like that uh, link to it. And I will directly drop it into your messages so that you can make sure that you download it, but tell them a little bit about it. Sure. So it's just um, a very simple three easy closing questions. I know a lot of people get a little bit stuck on when to ask for the sale and, you know, people don't, I mean, no one wants to come across as pushy or salesy and anything like that. So these questions just really help the person sell themselves, which is just such a nice thing. So by the time they answer the questions, they're already kind of sold. Um, it's simple, it's effective, and it works. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, you know, uh, it's something you can kind of use today. Like if you've got a sales, question, uh, sales um, uh, call today, you can just use it, pop it in there, see how it works. And I would love to know that it's worked really well. I get a lot of great feedback about it. Fabulous. And Kate, where are the best places to connect with you? I have a feeling I know what you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So look, I love LinkedIn guys. So on LinkedIn, um, you know, uh, yeah, hit me up as a, uh, a friend on LinkedIn. I've got a lot of connections, so you can kind of only reach out to first and second connections most of the time or not many third connections. So because I've got such a large network, it'll put you in contact with a lot more uh, first and second degree connections. Um and uh, so that's LinkedIn. I put out, um, you know, between three and five videos with practical tips as well, which you can catch up on on LinkedIn and also on my website. Um, you can find out more about me there um, and on places like Jenny's wonderful podcast. Uh, yeah. But uh, they're, they're basically the main um, places you can find me. You can still find me on Facebook, but I'm not that active at the moment. Okay. Yeah. No, that's excellent. Kate, I just want to thank you so much for sharing so much great information as well as for staying up so late in order to do this interview. I appreciate you so much. Thanks, Jenny. I appreciate you too. Great to be here. Lots of love, everyone. All right, you guys, there you have it. Kate gave such amazing nuggets of information. I don't care what it is that you're doing in your business. If you don't have a product, you don't have a service that you're looking to do sales, you're not doing sales calls, this still had nuggets that you could take away that if you're looking to pitch brands or you're looking to create a collaboration on Instagram with another larger influencer in order to grow your Instagram following. There is so much that you could take away from this when it comes to your messaging and making sure, like she said, that it's not about you, but it's about them. So I hope that you have already hopped over to the show notes to grab Kate's guide that she is offering. You can always send me a DM asking me to send you Kate's guide. I will make sure to drop that right there. Again, it's at Jenny underscore Melrose on Instagram. As always, having fabulous guests stay up till 1 a.m. their time in order to an interview to do an interview only happens because of the reviews that you guys leave. So I would so appreciate it if you haven't already taken the time to leave a review that you do so. It literally takes five seconds. You leave a rating, you send a couple, two, three sentences about what you think about the podcast, whether you've listened to one episode or whether you've listened to 200. I would so appreciate it if you took the time to do that. All right, you guys, until next time, I will see you all then. 